Okay, here we're going to start talking about the uh, the notes for the second uh, portion of these conic sections, where I'm going to uh, introduce a little bit about what's a circle. Now, of course, everybody uh, identifies a circle as, you know, this. And you probably already remember significant things like that's a center, that's a radius, this blue segment would be a diameter, uh, you might even remember some details like that this would be a tangent and maybe you even remember that this would be a secant line because it passes through the circle, contains a chord, but it keeps on going. Whereas a tangent only touches the circle at one point. Well anyway, that's what a circle looks like and those are some important uh, information about it. But really, what a circle is, is according to this definition, it is the set of all points that are equidistant from a given fixed point. Now, I'm hoping that you recognize a few of these words. From the given point, that would be the center. And the equidistant, this part right here, that must be the radius, because really all a circle is is a collection of points that are exactly the same distance away from this fixed center point. Now, I do want to introduce a new word here, and that is in replacing of set of all points is the word locus. Not locust, that's a bug, but locus, L-O-C-U-S. And that really just means a collection of all the points that, the collection of all the points that fit this description over here. All right, so that's what the definition of a circle is. Now, I know that it's time for story time with Mr. Hampton. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about where the equation of this circle came from. This is the same information that you would be getting in class, uh, so you're not learning anything different here than you would be at school. Well, the key ingredients for any circle were a center, which has the location, we'll call it H comma K, that's the center, and I know that I can find a point, something, I'll call it X comma Y, that happens to be the exact same distance R as every other point on the circle. So if I picked another point, it would have the exact same distance as R, etc. And we would get this blue circle working our way through here. Well, the key ingredients there are that we have two points and a fixed distance. So how do I deal with the distance between two fixed points? Well, I shouldn't say two fixed points, between two points. Well, I know the distance formula. And I remember that the distance formula looks something like this, which perhaps you recall is uh, nothing more than the Pythagorean theorem. But that's the distance formula. Well, what's the distance between the center and this point, this representative point? Because this point moves around. This, this xy point is variable. It, play, it changes locations. What's the distance between these two points? Anyone? Anyone? Yes, Mo? Radius! Oh, good job, it's the radius, okay? So the radius is the distance between those two fixed points. And what are the two fixed points? Anyone? Anyone? Curly? Oh, the two fixed points are the center and that XY. Good job, okay, so here we go. I got my fixed point, uh, and I'm gonna do the distance between X minus, and the center is at h squared plus and then the other point is the, the the y coordinate and that's compared to the y coordinate of the uh, the center point so I've got my h and k which were the center and my x and y which is a point on the circle and I'm just gonna work off of that but I really don't like that square root so I'm gonna square both sides so now I get this r squared is equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And just to be fair, I'm going to reverse this so it looks a little more traditional. Oops. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. And that, hopefully, is the formula that you recall from back in the glory days of geometry as the equation of a circle. If you were paying attention on previous day's lectures, when I was introducing conic sections, you would hopefully recall that this 
was what was written down before as the equation of a circle. Well, don't separate these two. These guys are connected to each other. They are the same thing. Same thing. They mean the same thing. The only difference is that I divided everything by r squared on all three pieces. And then this becomes the number 1 down here. And it really would have been more accurate to have replaced this a squared with r squared, because that's really what it was. But because all of our other conic sections use the letter a and b, we use a squared and a squared. But that's what it is. It's the r squared. So, for instance, let's say that I wanted to center. Uh, I want to graph. I want to graph this circle right here. I want it to go through five comma zero. Okay, that's my center at five comma zero, and I want it to touch this y-axis right there. Nice circle. Okay, so it's tangent to the y-axis. And its center is at 5, 0. Well, this center right here gives me the uh, information that I need for this part. And the tangent information, this tangent stuff, that tells me that this radius is... So this must be 5 squared. So that would be one way to write the equation, or you might see it written out like this. In fact, we probably wouldn't write the y minus 0, but that would be either one. Same thing. They mean the exact same thing. All right, well, what about this? What if I gave you the equation? What if I said the equation was... Uh, x plus 3 quantity squared plus y minus 6 quantity squared and we'll do this over 16 equals 1. What can you tell me about this? Well, I know that the center of this glorious circle, and I know it's a circle because these two numbers are the exact same number, uh, but the center is going to be at negative 3, positive 6, and the radius is going to be the square root of 16 or Four. So there we go. Let's see. I got another idea. Hang on. All right. My idea is back, and here it has magically appeared on the screen. Uh, I'm going to tell you that it's got a center at 4, negative 2, and it passes through this other point, 8, comma 5. So if I was going to just rough out a sketch, 4, negative 2 is, you know, down in this vicinity down here, and it passes through 8, comma 5. I'll use blue for that. So I know that this circle is doing something like this. But what's the equation going to be? Well, I'm glad you asked. One of the things I know for sure is that this much has to be true. x minus 4 quantity squared plus y plus 2 quantity squared equals the radius squared. But I don't know the radius. But I'm going to find out because I know that the radius is just the distance between the two, between the center and the point that's on the circle. So I'm going to find that distance, which is, let's see, uh, 4 minus 8 quantity squared plus uh, negative 2 minus 5 quantity squared. So I get the square root of, let's see, that'll be negative 4 squared plus negative 7 squared equals uh, 16 plus 49 and who came up with these numbers, uh, 65, square root of 65. So that's the radius all the way down is the square root of 65. So what should happen to this number right here? Well, that's supposed to be the radius squared. And since I know the radius is the square root of 65, then it must be the square root of 65 squared or just 65. So this would be one acceptable equation for the formula of that circle, or I could write it in the more traditional conic section form, which does the exact same thing, provides the same information, and there you go. 
So that should prepare you for portions of 11C.